Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. An active duty member of the U.S. Air Force set himself on fire in front of the Israeli consulate in the United States. How do we understand his actions? How should Muslims see him? Is he a hero or was what he did ill thought of? With me is Dr. Shabir Ali. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Aaron Bushnell, 25 years old, sets himself on fire, Dr. Shabir. There are a lot of questions about how to understand what he did. So I thought I'd pose that question to you. How should a Muslim think about his actions? In general, we try to take a balanced approach between things. Uh, you know, some people on the one hand are trying to discredit him. Some others are trying to celebrate him as a hero. In, in taking a balanced approach, we should say that... Uh, Let's look at what has been done and try to think through his mind, what was he trying to achieve and uh, whether those are noble objectives. We should look at the method. Uh, is that the right method to achieve those objectives? And uh, whether he was right or wrong, the fact of the matter is he self-immolated. And what does that mean for the world? But, mm -hmm. you know, stepping back from that. Um, can we re-examine our world situation and ask, uh, what does our world come to? Mm -hmm. okay. So, Dr. Shabir, I, I should note, of course, that Aaron said that before he um, set himself on fire, that he was doing this to protest uh, being complicit in the genocide of Palestinians. Yes. So that, that should set the framework of what we're doing. Yes. Uh, he and uh, many Americans uh, are, are looking at uh, their government's role in what is happening in the Middle East. It's public knowledge that the United States has vetoed uh, the UN resolutions one after another, uh, calling for a ceasefire. And uh, the continuing war on Gaza is uh, resulting in more and more deaths of Pal Palestinians. Well, not just women that, but all of the weapons that are going to Israel are from America. Right? Yes. And, and America sends a lot of money, billions of dollars to Israel every single year. Yeah. Beyond the weapons itself. Exactly. Plus, uh, very early on, they stationed their warships in the Mediterranean. Uh, to deter others in the uh, region from uh, intervening. Uh, and of course, that, has the po and that can be put in a positive way, that it is there to uh, stop the war from uh, widening uh, in, into the region. But at the same time, it serves as a deterrent to anyone who might think uh, to uh, oppose Israel uh, in its war on, on Gaza. Uh, so, yes, there, there are many, of course, who are supportive of their government, but uh, many others, like Aaron Bushnell, uh, will feel that uh, they, sh they don't want to be uh, complicit in this, you know, not in my name. And uh, Aaron Bushnell uh, took an extreme form of, or took to an extreme form of protest uh, to register the point. Uh, but uh, now that the point is uh, made by Aaron, I think we should all get the point. Yes, this is something terrible that's happening in the Middle East. Uh, the loss of all of these uh, Gazan lives is uh, too, uh, too much unbearable uh, for many. And um, it was unbearable for Aaron Bush now. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Shabir, people are doing everything they can to speak out and um, appeal to their governments to do something. But it's falling on deaf ears. There are no governments that are listening to people. And, and so people are getting really frustrated, really heartbroken by what they're seeing. And th there seems to be no outlet, like no way forward for people. Yes. Uh, as you know, Safiya, uh, we are taught in Islam that if we see something going wrong, then we should change it by force if we have the authority. And if we don't have the authority, then we change it by speaking against it. And if we don't even have the ability to do that, then at least we hate it with, with our heart. It looks like much of the world is just either hating it with their hearts or not hating it at all, like, you know, aiding and abetting uh, on the other extreme. Uh, and and we, we look at the Muslim world and we ask, you know, where, where are the Muslim leaders and the Muslim powers? Uh, like, at what level are they coming in on this? Uh, maybe just hating it with their hearts. But as the uh, hadith about this says, وَذَلِكَ أَدْعَفُ iman, That is the, the weakest uh, of, of faith. Uh, so it looks like we have chosen the weakest option. And we can only pray to God to bring back strength of faith uh, to the Muslim ummah. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, let's talk about Aaron Bushnell's actions. Mm -hmm. Because many Muslims are wondering, you know, can we defend this? Is he our hero? Or did he do something wrong? Well, uh, first of all, we wouldn't... And maybe it's not so black and white, right? Yeah, um, okay, so let's, let's break it down and see where, where the gray areas are. First of all, he's not a Muslim, so we, we, can, we cannot fully judge him by Islamic uh, terms. We can only say that 
Uh, as Muslims, we are against suicide. Uh, we don't commit suicide ourselves. We consider it to be a major sin, one of the most majors, uh, one of the most major of sins. And, uh, you know, it, it, why is it a major sin? It is uh, taking into one's own prerogative that which is really the domain of God. It's God's prerogative to give life and, and take life. So uh, we cannot take our own lives. And then uh, when it comes to despair, of course, uh, you know, one sometimes people commit suicide out of despair and we pity them. Um, but at the same time, we cannot go there because uh, we have to put our trust in God and not despair of his mercy. As bad as things look, uh, we know that there is something, uh, you know, in, in the horizon that we cannot see, but, but it is there. There is good that God will bring about, despite how difficult situations appear to be. Mm-hmm. Dr. Bray, how is this different from somebody going into the battlefield, for example, uh, knowing that they're going to die? That knowledge is not uh, like, a, first of all, it's not a 100% knowledge. It's, um, it's, one might say there is a fair expectation. Um, by contra- by comparison, we can think about uh, that uh, American uh, woman, a, a young woman who bravely uh, stood her ground and she was bulldozed uh, by... Yes, Rachel Corey. Yes, yes. Uh, as she was trying to protect and, and protest against the, the uh, harms being inflicted upon Palestinians. And, uh, you know, the, uh, Palestinian, the, the Israeli authorities just simply bulldozed her over. Uh, so one might say that even to her last uh, moment, there might have been some hope that, you know, some compassion may arise in the hearts of her um, attackers and, and they would, you know, forestall their, their action. So, so there's always a chance that this will not 100% result in death. The second thing is that, like, who is inflicting the, the, the harm? Who, who is killing the person? Uh, with the self-immolation, one is committing suicide. Clearly, one is killing oneself. Uh, in in the case of one being in battle and being killed by the enemy, it is clear it's the enemy that's killing you, not that you are killing yourself. Uh-huh. Uh, but having said that, one should not wantonly just simply you know rush into battle and and get killed. One should be uh, calculating and uh, uh, trying to win a war rather than to uh, you know harm one oneself. Um, but, but you can see a difference in that situation. So no, we, we're not going to celebrate him as a hero, but we're going to uh, think about and draw a lesson from the fact that somebody is willing to go to that extreme uh, to register a point which should have been registered in the hearts of all of us, uh, that what is going on in Gaza is wrong. Uh, this uh, killing of uh, now nearly 30,000 uh, people, most of them being women and children, this is terribly wrong, and any government that is complicit on, on that is uh, immoral, and uh, they, they need to be called out for, for what they are. And yes, uh, ordinary citizens should be saying, not in my name, I protest against this, but using legal and uh, uh, morally justified means of protest. Nicely said, Dr. Shibir. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqa jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.